Good afternoon, everybody. It's great to be here. I want to talk to you about a method for integrating design, technology, and business into your AR projects. It's called AR Design Sprints. And let's take a step back here and look at AR in the industry. And I have here Gartner's hype cycle. And there's two graphs, one from 2010 and one from 2018. So about 10 years ago, augmented reality was reaching its hype in terms of expectation in the market. And now, today, we're in the so-called trough of disillusionment. Eventually, we'll get to a place where the product becomes mature enough as a market, and there'll be a lot of opportunity and value that explodes around the world. And when I look at these two graphs, one thing that leaps out to me is companies are hungry to figure out how to turn an AR idea into reality. They're looking for a roadmap to go from A to Z. And in our work at PTC, we've worked with many industrial companies who are building augmented reality solutions. And when I look at that experience and the market, I see a number of paths that companies are taking. So one path is they identify an idea, and they have a business case, but it doesn't go forward. It falls flat for some reason. Um, there's a shift in priorities. There's a lack of investment. They don't have the right skills and technologies to move forward. Now, the second path is they have an idea. They're fired up. They've got a business case, and they leap over to development. They skip the design stage. And there's a couple outcomes from that. One is it can work out. They could go to market. It might be costly. It might take a lot more time. Or they end up not figuring out the right product fit for the market because they skipped key stages in the design stage where they looked at the problem, did some user research, did some prototyping. Another path is where they start off and they have an idea, and then they do a cursory, a cursory glance at design. They do a, a pit stop in that segment, and then they jump right into development. And again, having the same outcome where um, they might have to spend more time and money figuring out the product, prototyping with the software, instead of investing time early on in low fidelity prototyping, doing user research, and narrowing in on what the real problem is that they want to solve that will be valuable for the market. So the, the successful journey for companies is to go through all stages. And this is a really fascinating space to look at and unpack. One area that our team is really interested in is this transition from business idea to the creative stages of design and development. And we've been working on different techniques and uh, processes to take a team through those stages. And here we have the framework that we've come up with. We call it the AR creation process. It's a five-phase model for taking a group from napkin idea to full-on execution. And it has a trend of starting at strategy and getting into design and then building out the technology. And as we've worked on it, we've identified a number of activities that are really important to go through, certain milestones and deliverables. And as we've worked on refining the model, we've been looking for levers to crank on and, and help companies be more successful and be faster. And one area that's really interesting to us is in the early stages. We've been trying to figure out how can we get key stakeholders in the room, the product manager, the business owner, the lead designer, to come in and quickly come up with a strategy that takes in their perspective and rapidly start prototyping so that the team has a vision on where to go from product discovery all the way to application deployment. And we were familiar with the technique of running design sprints. And we started digging deeper. We read Jake Knapp's book uh, called Sprint, which is an excellent uh, read on the different methodologies that you can implement for design. And we started looking at design thinking principles and eventually, we landed on a method. And so here we have the generic view of a design sprint and the icons. And we aligned it to the early stages of the creation process, product discovery and preliminary design. 
And we started running this rinse, and we started learning, and we started identifying activities that are relevant for AR projects, which are highlighted here in red. And I'm going to talk about them a little bit more uh, further on in this talk. But let's shift gears and look at what a sprint, uh, how a sprint goes down. So uh, when we run a sprint at PTC, it's typically about two or three days. And you want about five to seven people in the room. And you're looking to have engineers, designers, and business owners in that workshop. And as well, people who are familiar with the customer and their experience. And the way it goes down in terms of the different activities you go through is on day one in the morning, you identify your goals and you jump into the research stage where you start unpacking the use case. What's the product that you're looking at? What's the experience you're looking at? Who's the user? What are the different needs we have from a business model perspective? Eventually, you start unpacking that problem and you target your target user and you map out their journey. So in this example here, we worked on a case where it was a service technician coming into a unit and had to do some kind of repair. And uh, we mapped out uh, Tanya, the technician's experience, along these different phases here, which became um, the overarching view of our problem. And so then you jump in, and you start brainstorming ideas. You go from a divergent process of generating concepts to a convergence process of narrowing down on a specific set of, uh, so, uh, narrowing down to a specific set of candidates. And there's a number of ways to do that through sketching, disc discussion, and brainstorming. Ultimately, you land on a series of sketches that illustrate out the user experience. Once you have that user experience illustrated, you then start thinking about what are the different capabilities and features I want in my product. And once you have those identified, then you start building prototypes. And we provide different techniques that you can do within two or three days through sketching and using uh, low fidelity digital tools to create a, a prototype that you can test and validate with your users and inform future development stages in that creative process. So, um, We've been working in this space for a while, and, and as we've worked with different customers, we've worked with BMW, we've worked with Global Foundries, we've wor worked with uh, Optimum Design, we've also run workshops in the company, and we've identified a few challenges that teams typically face, and we've built into the augmented reality design sprint different techniques to help out with that. So the first one is defining the direction. Um, we work with hardware companies and software companies, and um, they don't have a lot of experience with augmented reality. And so they don't even know how to get started. They're not sure what the first steps are. And so in the sprint, one of the first things we do is we share with them this AR creation process, and we do that by sharing a couple case studies. And in those case studies, we say, here are common people you want to have at these stages. This is the, the skills you need. And here's what it looks like if you do a project at this level, at a proof of concept, or at a production level. It takes this much time. And this is how big your team should be. And what that does is it orients the team around kind of a meta-level view of where am I going to go from here to there? And what does it take to be successful? Once, another technique that we do is we built out this uh, tool called an AR blueprint. It's a project planning tool to identify the different components of a product that you're going to build. And it's a really helpful tool to bring early on in the design sprint process because, one, it helps get people aligned on prior conversations. So in discussions around uh, business uh, models or picking technology, some initial ideas have already been selected. And you can map that down on this uh, diagram here. Or two, it's also helpful in identifying gaps. You might not have thought about what your data strategy is. You might not have thought about what your device paradigm. You might not have thought about what documentation need you need to be successful. And so the blueprint becomes this architectural plan for your project. And throughout the sprint, what we do is we come back to it and update it based on our learnings and also use it as a guiding light to make sure we're going in the right direction. Now, the second challenge is envisioning the experience. Um, it's very, uh, you know, we as people have a tendency to uh, look for solutions right away, and we, we love to brainstorm ideas. 
Um, we're not so disciplined with the process of unpacking a problem and investigating all the different opportunities that could lead to a solution. And so we use design thinking strategies to bring in a disciplined approach to have a deep insights onto the problem. So we use different techniques. Um, here's a simple one. I have that previous uh, user journey up here on the, on the slide. And um, when we started brainstorming uh, with our teams, we noticed there was a trend that they were hyper-focused on augmented reality solutions. And we did a simple switch. We gave them two colored sticky notes, one for AR ideas and one for non-AR ideas. And what ended up happening is as, as they were brainstorming one idea per sticky note, you started to get this kind of heat map of opportunity for augmented reality. And for some people in the room, that was an aha moment. They're like, oh, wait. I don't need to use AR everywhere. Maybe it's not re re relevant for scheduling an event, but it sure is relevant when I'm getting on site and maybe I want to visualize data in augmented reality. Or maybe it's really relevant when I'm servicing the equipment and I'm looking for visual instructions on a, how to carry out that procedure. Another technique we use is storyboarding. This comes out of the filming industry. It's a visual tool to outline the, the plot. And it's a great tool for augmented reality design, especially for low fidelity uh, purposes. And so there's a couple of reasons why. One is the third person's perspective lends really well to UX design for AR. As you know, when you work in an AR experience, you have the user, you have the device they're operating on, whether it's handheld or eyewear, and then there's the physical setting they're in with the machine that they're interacting with or the space they're interacting with. And so that third person perspective provides the team a view to see how those interactions happen. A second value is um, sketching out storyboards. Uh, you can do very simple versions. This is a, a nice illustration here, but in my, with my skills, I just do stick diagrams, and I show the object, and you can show the different interactions. The third thing that's uh, helpful, it's, it's very iterative. It's, some, it's visual, it's something to share. So as you work on the marker board and start illustrating out the storyboard, it becomes a conversation piece. And typically when we run a design sprint, we have two big marker boards, one here and one here. And once we, start, once we have a user experience storyboard, we leave it there and we come back to it time and again as we go deeper into the prototyping process. The third challenge we see is, is prototyping the product. Right now, there aren't a lot of design tools for prototyping in augmented reality. And um, we've identified a few techniques to facilitate that process. Uh, first, though, we start off by teaching different design patterns to the teams. They're new to AR. They're not familiar with UI lay layout. And they're not familiar with the different interaction possibilities. And so we do a seminar and quickly kind of take them through some different patterns, which in the end creates a common language to have a conversation during the prototyping process. It also gives them a palette of tools, UI tools, that they can implement as they get into the next stages of prototyping. We constantly use marker boards as a space to start our prototyping stage. So you can see here, uh, this is the unit that the service tech is going to come onto, and they place it in their environment. In this case, it's a training. And they go through a series of, of steps. Uh, sketching is really useful, and you can use color for highlighting. There's all sorts of techniques that any illustrator can do, or a non-illustrator like myself. Now, we have noticed that when you're in the sprint, it is helpful to have a visual designer because they can quickly create high render depictions. And that creates an accurate depiction of where you want to take the UI lay layout. So if you're looking for an investment for an AI design sprint, look for visual designers. They're excellent to have in the room for that. Another prototyping technique we do is uh, using PowerPoint or Keynote. Uh, it's a really simple tool to create a UI in that you can take a, a, a photo of the environment that you're working in, or you can take a screen grab of the CAD model that you're working on, and you can paste it onto the slide. And then you just copy and paste and make a bunch of them and add in the different UI elements just using simple boxes and text. And in PowerPoint, uh, which I use, there's different uh, techniques to use hyperlinking and animation. So they actually make it interactive. 
So once you have a prototype, then you can start testing it. And we've tried a number of techniques uh, in our lab. One of them is role playing, where you get cardboard and you have people move around and get a, a sense of the immersion of interacting with the experience. We also use PowerPoint and have people walk through and do a guided experience. And we've also dabbled with virtual reality. Um, you can take a picture of an illustration that you made for a UI, and then you can import it into a tool like Storyboard VR. And you can put on the headset and all of a sudden see the UI layout for your depiction and start getting a sense of uh, space and size and layout. And it's a cool way to see XR technologies working in concert. In, concert. in this sense, uh, prototyping for AR with VR. So uh, to conclude, companies are really hungry for solutions to turn AR ideas into action. And um, the design sprint approach is um, one method that we've tested and proven to be very successful in quickly taking key stakeholders through the product strategy and product prototyping stages of AR product development. And the big idea that I want to share with you is that the sprint methodology is an excellent way to take a, to take a holistic look at AR product development. You can integrate design, business, and technology perspectives in that one session and start to have a better sense of where to go with your project and be successful as you go on and work with your users. Thank you for your time. <laughs>